Hello and welcome to this screencast on sampling from a distribution. Uh, what I'd like to do is describe, uh, for example, how do we sample if we have some random variable t, and we know t is distributed exponentially. So that means that that means that the density of t values is an uh, exponentially decaying function. So here's t, and this is little p of t, the density, and this looks like p of t is equal to r e to the minus r t. Okay. So, um, so the cumulative distribution function is the probability that an event capital T happens before little t. So if I fix some little t and I say, what's the probability that the event happens before then? I'm going to start from the origin and I'm going to integrate all the way up to little t. And that's the probability that my big t lands somewhere in this interval from zero to t, or from minus infinity to t in general, but this process always starts no lower than zero. Okay, so, oops. So that probability, we're going to call that capital P of t, and I'll try and keep the of t down low so you can tell the difference between the capital and the lowercase. Uh, this is because of convention, so, uh, and I run out of letters really quickly if I start coming up with different letters for everything. Okay, so this is the associated, what we call the cumulative distribution, and it's going to be the antiderivative or the integral of p of t. So this is the integral of p of t from zero, little p of t, from zero to little t of r e to the minus r t dt, or maybe you prefer if I use dummy variables here, so e to the r s ds, and that is going to be Sorry, I forgot I got that, is going to be 1 minus e to the minus rt. And so the antiderivative of that guy, or the integral from 0 to t, looks like this function here, where this is now called the cumulative distribution. And it gives us, if we take integrals from a to b, find the area under the curve, that is the probability that the event capital T, the time of the event capital T, falls in between A and B somewhere. All right, so now that we have that terminology down, let's um, ask the question, if I have a an exponentially distributed uh, variable T, how can I pull a sample of this distribution? And what we're going to assume here is that we are capable of pulling a uniform sample from 0 to 1, and I'd like to translate that into an exponentially distributed sample. So what that means is if I were to take hundreds and hundreds or thousands and thousands of samples, I would get a lot of points down here at high density, and as I got higher up, they would gradually peter out until they were very thin out here at the top. And so that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a way of grabbing these little points all the way along the t-axis with a density that looks like that little p of t. Okay, so here is the trick for doing it, and it's it goes like this. So imagine you've sampled a whole bunch of these ti's. So ti is a whole bunch... So suppose we knew how to do that. A bunch of samples from this density. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to define a new set of values that are exactly defined by, and why this is the case, it takes some thinking and I'm not going to explain it, um, but we're going to define them to be e to the r, e to, what, 1 minus e to the minus r ti. So I get this new collection of numbers, and I'm ask, I want to ask the question, okay, so they're distributed somehow along the line, if they start from t can be as low as 0, ti can be as low as 0, which means si can be as low as, well, when ti is 0, si is 0. And they can go up as high as ti goes to infinity. This whole, this whole expression for si goes to 1 at most. 
So, okay, these numbers are going to be stuck between 0 and 1, and um, I want to know what their distribution is. Okay, so, um, so we're going to use something called the probability inverse theorem, or sorry, probability inverse transform. And the probability inverse transform says that we should consider, so what we're looking for, um, we're looking for the probability that the new random variable, so this little si, we're going to say those are samples of, so these are now, suppose they're samples of some random variable s. Okay, much like these ti's were samples of the random variable t that was some point on the uh, t-axis. Okay, so what we're interested in then is what's the probability that the, the, um, the sampled point is less than or equal to some fixed value s. And that is by the definition of little s, um, or sorry, but yeah, by the, well, uh, so but by the definition of s, we know that this is going to be the probability that, well, s is defined as p of t because this function here was p of ti, where, sorry, capital F, capital P, mistake, capital P of ti, which is this function here. And so that means that the, um, the random variable s is a transformed version of t by this formula here. And so we're asking when is p of t less than little s? And now, because P is, this capital P is, this one here, is a monotone function, we can invert it. And so this is equal to the probability of T being less than or equal to P inverse of S. It's monotone increasing, so the inequality stays the same way. And then this expression is exactly um, capital P of p inverse of s. That's how we defined p. It's the probability that capital T is less than some particular number. In this case, that particular number is p inverse of s. Now, p of p inverse of s is exactly s. And so what that means is the probability, so this guy is equal to the, okay, we need a name for the probability cumulative distribution of s. I'm going to call that q of little s. So q of little s is, is going to be defined from 0 to 1, because that's the interval over which the s values can spread. And it's got to have a slope of 1. And so when I calculate its density, q of s is equal to capital Q prime of s, that is just uniform density. So this goes from 0 to 1 with height 1. Okay, and so what that tells us is that if s is uniform and we define t implicitly from by this equation, we can go backwards through this. So what I need to do is I want to take samples s i from a uniform distribution on 0, 1. And then calculate ti. And to get that, what I have to do is I just solve this expression here for ti and I get minus 1 over r, natural log of 1 minus s. 
i. And so this is how we calculate ti's that are exponentially distributed. And this, but this works for any, uh, any distribution. So if you have the formula for capital P of t and you can invert it, then you can sample that distribution if you're able to sample the uniform distribution. So let me switch over to MATLAB. Uh, let's go to MATLAB. So here we have MATLAB, and this is the script that I worked on in the previous video, and we're going to use this to do one more example, the example of exponentially distributed uh, samples, or sampling from an exponential distribution. So what does that mean? What do we have to change? Really, we just have to change this. So we're going to change its name. This is going to be exponential. Oh, I had the option to just replace everything, but okay, it's only one, so that's okay. So I'm changing this to exponential, and now instead of this expression here, I need to define an r value. So let's just choose r equal 1 for now. And the exponential sample is going to be given by minus 1 divided by r multiplied by, and again, for paranoia, I'll just put these in brackets. Actually, ease of reading, I guess, is my better excuse. And then in the brackets, I'm going to put, well, I could put 1 minus s, but if you think about it, if I take s uniformly distributed from 0 to 1, and I subtract it from 1, I just flip that interval around, and I just have a uniform, 1 minus s is also uniform from 0 to 1. So I can actually just put in rand of n comma 1, the number of samples I want. And this should give me, oh, now this function down here is not accurate anymore. What I need for the density is r times x of minus r times t, sorry, times x. Oh, well, let's stick with t. Uh, so we want time in this case. And let's see what happens when we plot that. Oh, I forgot a log expression. Look at that, right there. So this was just a, a, a modified uniform random, but I need to put in the natural log. And in MATLAB, the natural log is L-O-G, not L-N. And now what happens when we run that, you can see we get this curve. And oh, why didn't we get the plot? Uh, oh, yeah, what happened here? Vectors must be the same length, x equal. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, so I see what I did wrong here. You'll notice I have I, did, I changed my variable to t, and now I'm trying to plot x, and x is a leftover from before. So I'm going to change that x to t, and I'm going to put up here at the top a clear. And so clear, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but if I look at my workspace, I can type who in the command line, and it'll, it'll give me the list of all the variables that are currently defined in the workspace. So if I type clear, and then who, they're all gone. So it was using an old x that wasn't meaningful for this example. So let's just rerun that with uh, the correct um, vectors here and see what we get. Oh, got to be over here, F5. There we go. And there is our exponential distribution. So we have successfully sampled a whole bunch of, let's see, 10,000 points from an exponential density. Okay, so uh, I will wrap it up there. That's what I wanted to show you. And uh, we will do more of these MATLAB demos in the future.